I have finished implementing Osana's Friday event. With this, all five of Osana's weekday events are now complete. Yandere-chan can now sabotage Osana's interactions with Senpai to severely damage their relationship and destroy Osana's chances of dating Senpai. However, this feature won't be 100% finished until there is a cutscene where Osana confesses to Senpai. In this cutscene, Yandere-chan will either watch the love of her life slip out of her grasp or watch her rival's hopes and dreams be shattered by rejection. The cutscene that presently occurs when Riku confesses his love to Kokona is just a placeholder. It doesn't represent my vision for the actual confession between Osana and Senpai. The confession cutscene is a key aspect of my vision for the game, so I'm not going to make a video about the process of sabotaging Osana's interactions with Senpai until after a proper confession cutscene is finally in the game. Judging by the rate of my progress ever since the conversion to C-Sharp and Unity 5, I think I'll be able to get the confession cutscene into the game relatively quickly, and then I can finally make a video showing off all of the work I've done on Osana. After that, I'll explain what else needs to be done before I can release a build that actually has Osana in it. In short, I've made important progress with Osana, but you have to wait a little while longer before I can show it to you. In times like these, when I'm not ready to make a video showing off my latest progress, I make a video about something else related to the game's development. And today, I'm going to be revisiting the topic of the Yakuza character that I described in August. If you don't care about the Yakuza at all, then I guess today's video ends right here. But if you are interested in hearing more about him, then the rest of the video should be a nice treat. After I proposed the concept of a career criminal that eliminates Yandere chans rivals for her, I received a lot of questions about the character. Answering these questions has caused the Yakuza to develop some additional depth, which is what I'll be telling you about today. After I described the morbid crimes that the Yakuza is involved with, many people asked me what his younger brother thinks of him. A lot of people were curious to hear if the delinquent actually knows what his older brother does for a living. I've spent some time thinking about it, and I'll tell you what I've come up with. I imagine that the delinquent has idolized his older brother since early childhood. The delinquent thinks that his older brother is cool and badass and wants to follow in his brother's footsteps. He probably does not realize the true extent of his brother's criminality. The Yakuza might simply tell his brother that he steals from rich, greedy, corrupt CEOs, or something that sounds vaguely ethical. I imagine that the Yakuza and his younger brother had a very difficult childhood. Perhaps one parent was dead and the other was an alcoholic or disabled. So the Yakuza, from a young age, had to assume the responsibility of taking care of himself and his younger brother, and maybe his own parent as well. His family needed money more than anything, but conventional jobs just weren't paying enough money to sustain them. So he turned to a life of crime to earn enough money to provide a good life for him and his brother. And this eventually led him to join the Yakuza. Primarily, he just wanted to make sure that his kid brother wouldn't have to struggle as much as he did. The last thing that the Yakuza wants is to see his little brother entering a life of crime. The Yakuza probably discourages his brother from following in his footsteps, but the delinquent refuses to change his ways. Perhaps, instead of asking Yandere-chan for fresh victims, the Yakuza would ask her to steer his brother away from the criminal lifestyle. Perhaps the Yakuza would only perform favors for Yandere-chan if she can demonstrate that she is making progress in reforming the delinquent. However, the delinquent is a loyal young man who would never abandon his friends. So in order to change him, Yandere-chan would first need to reform all of the other delinquents one by one. 
this would have heavy consequences once the delinquent rival, Osuro, arrives at school. It's possible that Yandere-chan might be able to choose how she will help the Yakuza, either by providing him with fresh human bodies, or by reforming his younger brother. Yandere-chan's school, Akademi High, is supposed to be a prestigious school that only accepts the highest caliber of students. So you may be wondering why this school even tolerates delinquents in the first place. I do have an explanation. It's a side story that involves the delinquents, Osuro, and the guidance counselor. I don't want to give it away at this point in time, but you can rest assured that there is a logical explanation for the presence of delinquents at a prestigious school. And you can rest assured that, even before I suggested the idea of the Yakuza, I already had a plan for how the player would be able to reform the delinquents. Some people have asked if the Yakuza feels shame for the crimes he has committed, or if he is simply pure evil. I've come up with three possible ways to explain his actions. Perhaps he only targets people that would be considered bad guys, like corrupt businessmen, corrupt politicians, corrupt cops. People whose selfish actions are making life worse for hundreds or thousands of people. By kidnapping them and harvesting their organs, he is making sure that these disgusting people will be removed from society and will contribute their body parts to people in need. Perhaps the Yakuza is a vigilante, and every person he kidnaps or kills is someone who deserved it. So then, why does he agree to kidnap schoolgirls for Yandere-chan? Perhaps Yandere-chan manipulates him into thinking that her rivals are horrible people who deserve to die. Perhaps she tricks the Yakuza into carrying out vigilante justice on whoever she has marked for death. Or... Perhaps the Yakuza's boss is threatening to kill the Yakuza's younger brother unless the Yakuza does whatever his boss demands. The Yakuza doesn't enjoy his job, but he's forced to do it in order to prevent his brother from being killed. Perhaps his ultimate goal is to rise to the top of his organization and kill his boss so that his brother will be safe. Perhaps the Yakuza ending might involve helping the Yakuza kill his bosses so that he is freed from their control. Or, perhaps years and years of doing horrible things on a daily basis has slowly eaten away at the Yakuza's sanity. To escape the guilt and the shame of ending and ruining so many lives, he thinks of nothing but providing his younger brother with a safe, comfortable life. In other words, everything he does is the result of a warped, twisted love for his brother like a Yandere, in a way. If half of all students in the school disappear or die, the remaining students should refuse to go to school. As a result, the school would have to close. This would cause Senpai to transfer to another school in another city which would be an instant game over for Yandere-chan. In other words, killing too many students would prematurely end the game. Yandere-chan pays the Yakuza for his services by supplying him with kidnapped students. Every week, his services will cost more than the previous week, even if Yandere-chan has never done business with him before. As a result, paying the Yakuza for his services could rapidly deplete the school's population and lead directly to a game over. That's a serious design flaw, but there's another problem too. Many people have expressed that they have no desire to use the Yakuza's services, because what happens to his victims is simply too gruesome. I have an idea that could resolve both of these problems. 
As I've mentioned, Yanderi Chan School is a very prestigious institution. Some of the students come from very rich families. The Yakuza might ask Yanderi Chan to find the richest students in school and kidnap them for him. Then the Yakuza would demand ransom money from the student's parents and release the student once he has been paid. This way, Yandere Chan could earn favors from the Yakuza without depleting the school's population and without sending any innocent students to a fate they don't deserve. Despite the differences between Infochan and the Yakuza, a lot of people have expressed that these two characters are still too similar in terms of functionality, and that they can't coexist. A lot of people have also mentioned that the actual, real-life Yakuza have been on the decline for the past decade, so a badass Yakuza character in a modern-day setting simply isn't very believable. I have a solution for both of these problems. It's an idea that I've had since 2014, although I've never had a reason to mention it in my videos until now. It's called 1980s Mode. The protagonist of this mode would be Yandere Chan's mother, attending high school in 1989. Her objective would be to eliminate anyone who tries to date the young man that she has fallen in love with. Because of the time period, you wouldn't have access to anything that didn't exist in the 80s, such as smartphones, social media, or Infochan. Although 1980s mode would feature a different cast of characters and take place in a different time period, it wouldn't be an entirely separate game. It would be more like an elaborate difficulty mode where the player has access to less tools and a few of the rules are different, along with a handful of cosmetic changes. It's designed to be something that I could add to the game in very little time with very few new assets. Similarly to Mission Mode, or Lovesick Mode. The reason I bring it up is because in the 1980s, the Yakuza were much more powerful than they are today. A powerful and dangerous Yakuza character makes a lot more sense in 1989 than in modern day. What I'm saying is that perhaps the Yakuza should be restricted exclusively to 1980s mode, where he would offer a few of the services that the player would normally get from Infochan. On a related note, this isn't how Japanese delinquents are usually portrayed in modern day. Modern Japanese delinquents are usually depicted like this. This kind of appearance is associated with really old-school delinquents. So it would make a lot of sense if the delinquents in 1980s mode are portrayed this way, and the delinquents in modern day are portrayed more like this. Then again, it's also possible that there would be no delinquents in 1980s mode, since the school was much more strict back then. In this case, the player would need to find a completely different way to get in touch with a member of the Yakuza. I'm sorry that I still need a little more time before I'll be able to make a proper video about Osana. I hope that I've been able to entertain you by discussing these details about the Yakuza. I feel very confident that in my next video, I'll be able to show off a new elimination method for the first time in months. Thank you for following the development of Yandere Simulator.